So as you likely saw, I got very excited about last night's wagers. For the first time this season, a player wagered for the tie when he didn't have to. And that's something I feel pretty strongly about for a couple reasons, and we'll get into those a little bit later. I found out later that he did it because he saw my videos, so when I saw some things flying around on Twitter during the game tonight, I couldn't watch, I had to record it, I figured I would have some explaining to do. I hope this suffices. Welcome to the final wager. Another enjoyable game from our players today, our champion Arthur, looking strong once again, 18,200, a round number despite some uh, bizarre daily double wagers. Carolyn and Eric are still in contention, both. First and second, Arthur and Carolyn. Carolyn doubles up. She's going to have 26,800. So to top her, Arthur will need to wager 8,600. If he gets it wrong, he'll be left with 9,600. So we'll see that Eric doesn't even have 9,600. He'll have to wager at least 1,200 and get it right. Since he needs to get it right, he might as well wager everything. But for some reason he wants to go for less, he's able to. And Carolyn, to stay above Arthur if he gets it wrong, can wager at most 3,800. Now, for second and third, Eric and Carolyn. If Eric doubles up, he's going to have 16,800. So to ensure she's above that, Carolyn will need to wager 3,400. So that leaves her with a tight range of acceptable wagers between 3,400 to top Eric and 3,800 so that she doesn't fall below Arthur. Now, we saw yesterday that Arthur wagered for the tie, which is something that I support very strongly for game theory purposes and for another reason I'll explain in a second. If she thinks he'll do it again, and if she's confident in her knowledge of world capitals, then maybe she wagers everything. And that is what she did. And Arthur went for the tie. They both got it right. Our first time this year having co-champions, and I'm pretty excited. Now, there are two reasons why I suggest the leader always wager for the tie. First of all, the point of Jeopardy is to come back the next day. You do that by winning or by tying. There's no potential upside to wagering more than you absolutely have to to guarantee a tie. Tacking on that extra dollar won't help you come back the next day if you're right, but if you're wrong, you could lose a game by a dollar, and there have been several instances where that has been the case. The other and probably more powerful reason that I suggest wagering for the tie is if another player knows that you're going to wager for the tie, he might do the irrational wager of betting it all. He'll bet it all. And if he gets it wrong, he'll have zero. Whereas if he had made an actual rational wager and you both got it wrong, he would win. This would have been the case here with Carolyn. Had everyone gotten it wrong on some impossibly difficult Capital Cities question, Arthur still would have won. Now, if Carolyn hadn't known that Arthur was going to bet for the tie, she might have stayed in that 3,400 to 3,800 range. And had they gotten that impossibly difficult question, he would have lost. So there's no difference on the upside, but if he gets it wrong, it could make the difference. And I know there's a difference between process and outcome, but I like to focus on process, and giving yourself a better chance of winning is always the name of the game in wagering theory. And in mind games, too. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm really looking forward to a rematch tomorrow night. And we'll take it apart here, on the final wager. We'll see you then.